Hello and welcome, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ and whoever else happens to wander onto this podcast. Uh, welcome to Man Buns and Jesus, the uh, the podcast where two dudes with man buns talk about Jesus. I'm Pastor and ben. other things <clears throat> and other things. I'm Pastor Ben uh, here at Good Shepherd in Lake Orion, Michigan. That over there is Pastor Josh Laborious. Uh, he's at Edgewater Lutheran Church in Eastvale, California. I keep getting the, well. I used to get those backwards all the time, and I feel like I was I've about to say better. you got it right. You got it right I on did. that one. It took me a year and a half, but you know we got it's, there. It's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Um, or so more accurately, Josh is in his house, but the this is true. He serves at Edgewater Lutheran Church. I do. Yeah. Um, uh, and today, ladies and gentlemen, what we will be talking about is uh, social media specifically because we've touched on it before, right? Like we did our very first episode was don't be a jerk. Um, if you go back and listen to it, I apologize for the terrible audio quality. It is <laughs> it is brutal. it is bad, like pretty <laughs> close to unlistenable. I will I will admit. Um, mm. If you're really interested, send us a message and I will remaster the audio and re-release it. Anyway, um, and in various other things, we've talked about social media and kind of how you should act, how we are, how we should behave on social media. That's not what today is about. Today is is a bigger like maybe a like a society level approach, and it's brought on by the fact that Elon Musk recently brought bought Twitter. Well, two things. That's half of it. And um, Meta, which is the new, it's it's the rebrand for Facebook's parent company, and Instagram, and I think they they own some other ones, but. The, regardless, the stock for Meta is tanking. They are hemorrhaging money. I think it's down like 40% in the last month. So I saw an article today as I, I was I scroll through the headlines on Google News on the morning in the morning when I'm on my way down in the gym. And I saw a headline that like, is this the death of social media? So we want to talk about is that is that a bad thing? Um and maybe a little oh, bit of uh do we actually think that's true also yes um and that might not be a bad place well no let's i don't let's, know where <laughs> i don't know where to let's start, start here on this one. So, josh what is your perception of social media as a part of our culture over the last i mean facebook started i think i was in middle school well, we were in middle school because we're the same age. Does that sound about right? Something. Let me let me ask the Google quick. <laughs> when was Facebook created? Two thousand and four. I don't remember where I would have been. Okay, it started getting big when we were in middle school. We were in middle school from two thousand six to two thousand nine, just for a frame of reference. <laughs> And a lot of our listeners now remember how much older they are than us. So yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, um, yeah. So Facebook was just kind of starting to hit the scene then. <clears throat> there were some kind of precursor social media networks. The uh, was it MySpace? Uh, you MySpace. Uh, AOL Instant Messenger was kind of a thing. Um, there was an attempt for a Christian social media called Shout Life. I don't existed. remember that at all. <laughs> um, um, but then shortly, well, and then you kind of had precursors to some of our like Instagram and uh, TikTok stuff. You had Vine. Um, Rest in peace, Vine. <laughs> <laughs> Way ahead of its time. Um, and you know, Twitter kind of started somewhere in that that neck of the woods too. I think they were probably a little later, but um, kind of 
came up with the same popularity of Vine, but just in a different format. Um, Twitter only bought so much... Vine, but hmm? Twitter was the company that bought Vine and then. Oh, shut that's it right. Down. So that's right. Um. So I think the question that you led into this with was like, what's what's my view? What's my how has social media affected our culture since like we were in middle school? Badly. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I think it's worth it's worth just throwing out there. I hate social media. I shouldn't say that. I think that there is little to no value in social media. Um, and the more research is done on it, I think the worse it is. So mm -hmm. I, the reason that I dislike social media is I think threefold and two are, two are pretty serious. One is like, you could make arguments against it pretty effectively. One kind of fact that you have to deal with with social media is it is devastating on mental health. There is not a single study that I have ever seen from an academic source that says that social media benefits mental health, especially in adolescence. Um, depression, anxiety, eating disorders, like it causes serious mental problems. And the more research that is done on this, the more kind of solid those conclusions get, right? So mm -hmm. social media is, is it's bad for you. Like it, I mean, it, <laughs> there's no way around that. And, and you have to get pretty creative with where you're going to go for your sources to argue against that point. The best you can say is that in moderation, you can minimize that effect. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a main issue for me because I I really care about mental health. I think it's it's a really important thing for us to to worry about to deal with, and social media really negatively impacts that. So the second thing that I really have against social media is how I think it is exacerbated division in society because the way social media works um, is it filters what you see and it unless you go way out of your way to to tailor like to tailor what you're seeing um you're going to see people that agree with you because you like their posts or you watch the whole video when they post so you and the algorithm notices that whatever sorting algorithm facebook or instagram or um or twitter or anything else uses it sees that so it shows you more of that like that's how these platforms are built they don't show you things you don't want to see and what that it creates an echo chamber you only see views that agree with you, so you get more extreme, so you see more extreme views that agree with you, and then it's just a cycle, and, and it's really hard to use social media in a way that doesn't result in that. Um, so that's an issue. I, I think that is one of the reasons that we're feeling and we're seeing division so much more starkly, so much more aggressively than than one would say that maybe historically there has been and i think it's pretty directly linked to social media um and then the third thing and this is the one you can argue i think it gives an illusion of connection right because and this is something i used to say all the time i said i'm only on facebook to connect because i have friends all over the country to stay connected with them mm -hmm. I'm not. <laughs> Facebook does not connect me to my like, yeah, I'll see major life events, right? I'll see, oh, you know, Schnocky had a baby or, you know, so and so got married or whatever. But I'm not really connected with them in any way, but it gives me the illusion so I don't feel the need to reach out. Um, and I think that's really detrimental to, to relationships, right? If if you want to stay connected with someone, 
don't use the excuse, oh, we're friends on Facebook, so I see their stuff. Like, give them a call, shoot them a text message, like actually connect with them. Um, and you can argue that one, right? I've seen, like, I, I was just talking to a mom the other day who, who she started staying at home and, um, and some Facebook groups were very helpful for her as a place of support with other stay at home moms and kind of how do you handle this stuff? How do you do, how do, how do you kind of deal with this going from a full-time job to staying at home? Like, so you can argue that one, right? There are places where you can find actual connection, but I would argue that when that happens, it's really serving more as a chat platform than it is as a show, social media platform right you could accomplish the same thing by getting a group text of all these people uh the difference of course being that sometimes you meet them online and you need someone's phone number before you can add them to a group text so that's i i don't like social media and those are my reasons and you can only are as far as i'm concerned you can really only argue one of them mm -hmm. and I, what do you think I, I think i would agree with those things you know, the there's the um, kind of self-inflicted damage that social media can do that you mentioned, um, especially when it comes to mental health. Um, and something that it, I want to toss in here on that one, um, especially with how social media has changed in the last handful of years and the way that they try to curate content for people, it's become a way to get that endorphin hit that some people like really need and crave um and so especially for people with like adhd or um other um like attention related or um people who have uh like susceptibility to addiction can get addicted to social media and so we've created this kind of new problem within society for people that already have you know issues with focusing or um creating and kicking bad habits um so there's that piece i yeah on the interpersonal level you're far more likely to become somebody who likes to shout into the void than somebody who really like becomes a part of uplifting and supportive communities and i'll be honest i use social media at this point for sports news uh to see wedding and baby pictures and uh currently my church's facebook page basically functions as our website um is it bad for those things no i like seeing my my friends baby pictures but it's not like like you said josh you can't use that as an excuse to not also reach out um and i think the the one kind of benefit that social media can bring especially if we use it as a good tool is like people will notify you of their major life events, you know, whether it's a, uh, an engagement, a wedding, a hospitalization, a child, a death in the family, whatever the case may be. Um, and so when we see those things, if you want to drop a comment, that's fine, but make an effort to like reach out to that person individually and connect with them see how you can support them above and beyond a, a one-liner um because i think when when facebook is like a way that you kind of keep an eye on people in your life um and and know when they need that extra level of care that can be a good tool but beyond yeah. that i'm with you there, there's not a lot of redeeming qualities um so kind of with with that like for the rest of this podcast you guys know what you're going to get neither yeah. of us are big fans of these platforms um 
so when we when I see an article saying, is this the end of social media? I'm going to be like, meh. Right. Cool. Um, <laughs> like, and, and that I might have even... lost my my sourcing or my uh, my platform for hosting a free church website. But <laughs> yeah, Ben's got <laughs> Ben's got to get on that. So kind of circling back to the reason we started this episode, um, I want to deal with these headlines, right? First, there's Meta is is hemorrhaging money. Um, I could see a world, it, like I could see in the next few years, I could see Facebook dying um, because of all of this, like the scandals they've been caught up in with, mm -hmm. um, with how they handle quote, news or whatever, like, I, I could see Facebook dying. Um, I think it's probably less, pro it's becoming less and less profitable probably to advertise on Facebook. I don't actually know that, but I would guess that. Um, and the demographic who uses it is getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. And the, I think the, Instagram's the probably target demographic too. That like key <laughs> advertising target demographic, not really on Facebook very much. Uh huh. Uh -huh. the, uh, the like middle age or like young adult to middle age group that tends to spend more they're yep. mostly not on facebook um, instagram some twitter a lot of tiktok snapchat yeah. maybe facebook not so much so and and facebook also they put a money a lot of money in their virtual reality platform that is not selling <laughs> I think there was a report at one point that there were exactly like 34 people in the in the quote unquote metaverse, which is embarrassing. So um, I don't know if the company would die completely, but I think it would it would sizably be reduced, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of dealing with that, right? Is is Facebook dying? It could be. I I'm not an expert on macroeconomics and Facebook historically has done a really good job keeping up with the trends of social networks. But, you know, it's definitely not too big to fail. And then as far as Elon Musk taking over Twitter, first of all, I'm pretty sure this has been a joke the whole time. And then Twitter made him follow through on it. So he is just kind of like, all right. I mean, when he took over his introduction to the company, was he, he literally carried a sink into their headquarters and said, let that sink in, right? This is, I'm pretty sure this is a gigantic joke to him. Um, <laughs> it's a really expensive joke, but, and there are people that are freaking out like, oh, this is the end of free speech. And this is something that has driven me nuts about social media for years. Social media does not like they're not bound by the rules of free speech, right? Like a newspaper does not have to let you publish with them, right? If I write a an article for the New York Times, they don't have to let it. They don't have to publish it, right? In the same way, social media, it's not like if they cancel your account or they stop you from posting, they're not limiting your free speech, right? They're saying you can't be on our platform. Right, you can still say and think whatever you want. That doesn't mean that they have to let you use their platform to get it out there. So yeah. that is something that has driven me nuts. Like these are, I, they are not governmental entities, right? They can moderate their platform however they see fit. So if Elon Musk decides that he wants to, you know, do whatever with Twitter, especially now, it is his company. He can do whatever he wants because he own, he paid billions of dollars. Billions? Was it billions? Billions of dollars for this company. So $44 billion. If he doesn't let you post what you want, like, oh no. I mean, essentially he just bought a really toxic short form digital newspaper. It let's, let's think about it like that. So is it the end of free speech? No. Is it the I, end of you being able to post whatever you want on, on the internet? Still no. You can you can build your own blog. It's not hard. No one's gonna read, read it. it. 
but you are free to do so, right? Yeah. And that's something that's always killed me. Like, this I person think, got kicked off social media. Who cares? I think somebody that's, uh, I don't remember where I saw this, but somebody summarized it well by saying to something to the effect of, um, if your concept of free speech is bound up in who owns Twitter, like, you have mm -hmm. no clue what free speech actually is. Get over yourself. Yeah, like, it's <laughs> you still have the ability to go talk to your neighbor. That and, and like discuss, especially right now, like full disclosure, we're recording this the Thursday before Election Day. And so we have, you know, full ability within this country and according to our constitutional rights, which that's a whole nother story. <laughs> To go talk that's to a, our neighbor about a series of podcasts. That is a yeah, that, yeah, you're right. That's what but, free speech is. I can go out on my on the corner of my street and I can say pretty much whatever I want. Mm -hmm. That is, for, if I speak against the government, I am not going to jail. Mm -hmm. That is free speech. Free speech does not mean someone has to give me a platform to do so. Yeah, I think. The reality for me, at least, of where social media is headed, I think these two pieces of news kind of maybe will help indicate where that's going. But I think the reality is it's just going to make, rather than a couple of large social media networks dominating the industry, namely Facebook, Twitter, um, it's basically just those two, honestly. Um you could throw Google in there, depending on how you count YouTube. Um, yeah. Some people consider it social network uh, or social media. But um, I think what's really going to happen is we're just going to see. So YouTube is, is counted as bigger than Twitter. Cool. If you look at the market share for social media platforms, Facebook is 37%. YouTube is 27%. Twitter is 7%. Reddit is five percent. Okay, and then you Consider get Instagram. Reddit social media. I love that. <laughs> well, I think Reddit. I I think Reddit could be an indicator. I think you're looking at kind of very niche. I don't know online places where. I, I mean, it's going to go back to chat boards. Like that's basically where we're headed. That's which I how think is probably these... better than where we are. You're right, and like for so many of these things like if you needed advice on woodworking you went to some woodworkers blogs chat board and you got advice on how to do woodworking yeah you want to learn to code like, you go to stackexchange.com like the <laughs> nick offerman the guy who plays um shoot why am i blanking on his name ron swanson thank you on parks and rec aka per perhaps my favorite tv character of all time um the man's ideal dinner is two steaks and nothing else <laughs> um anyway he genuinely does woodworking as a side passion apart from acting and being a comedian and like has a blog where he will offer woodworking advice to people who want it. So that part of Ron's character in the show is a genuine part of who Nick Offerman is. And that's kind of where we're headed back to, I think. You'll see one for woodworking. You'll see one for bird watching. You'll see one for uh, people who like to do nerdy theological things. Um, you'll see one for, I mean, you'll probably see a handful for politics. Um Rather than than them just being dark, seedy corners of the large social media networks, they'll just be their own thing. Rather than them being Reddit, <laughs> I mean, they might they might move to Reddit. Who knows? Or Discord, or wherever. Um. Anyway, I don't think social media will disappear. I think it'll just take a new form, and I think it'll be much more disjointed. Which. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, I think that makes it easier for us as pastors to speak to like 
some of the ill effects of social media um, because there won't be as many people who are really feeling it in the worst way like there have been in the last half decade or so. Yeah. Yeah. So I think No, I think I think that would be a good direction for our society. If if social media kind of shrinks and it becomes more of a chat board kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I I Again, I don't know. I suspect that would reduce the negative impact on mental health because essentially, I mean, it's, if it's a chat board, right, you're not, you're not dealing with the bombardment of, of what you should be mm -hmm. all the time. Um, I think there's still a potential for anytime you are choosing what you engage with, there's going to be a potential to create echo chambers. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think when those when those chambers are smaller, like Facebook, Twitter, have have themselves admitted, they are so large, they cannot mod monitor their own websites. Yeah, they have bots that do that. But there are ways to work around bots. Some of them require other bots. <laughs> um, so like there's no way that facebook can monitor every comment every chat every video on their site to prevent somebody from telling someone else to off themselves like that was a very real problem that existed on facebook for a couple of years a while back where people were literally encouraging other people on the site to commit suicide and facebook couldn't do a darn thing about it because they weren't big enough to maintain it but I think when some of these social media sites shrink and as other smaller things start to develop, I have more hope that they'll be able to actually monitor what's going on on their platforms. And keep it civil. Um, yeah. Which, which would be it, nice. I might yeah. be an optimist there. That's not normally in my <laughs> nature, but you know. Well, and as to that third point, like it becomes more community more it, it becomes closer to what community is mm -hmm. if if it's more of a chat room then mm -hmm. yeah so it reminds me honestly of like this is maybe a bit of a history lesson and i'm maybe showing my nerd card too much here um coffee houses in europe like the original coffee houses in europe the third were, space they, they were part uh place to get a cup of coffee sometimes part brothel uh but more often than not <laughs> <laughs> did yeah. not know that yeah uh and sometimes and more often than not they were uh, a place where people um of usually one trade or of similar trades could get together and talk through things um so you would have a coffee house that was dedicated to shipbuilders and they would get together and discuss elements of the trade um and if you needed a ship built well you went to the shipbuilder's coffee house because you probably would find the owners of the shipbuilding yards there like that was just what you did and i think that's kind of like what we're gonna see from social media if you want to engage somebody in a conversation about something you know where to find them because they'll be in their corner of the internet talking about their favorite thing and i you know we're you're kind of describing reddit yeah i know i'm describing reddit but i think it's going to be even more segmented than just like our uh trad blog stands or something i don't know what i created a fictional reddit page thank you uh our preds fans that's uh, a thing right oh, i know i know <laughs> But it'll be its it'll be its own site or it'll be a chat board somewhere and um especially as these things become less and less profitable there'll be more and more push to um like
like there'll be more and more push from social media, like the big ones that are left to try and monetize what they have left, which I honestly think will just make it less and less appealing. Right. The more advertisements there are, the less people want to deal with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think from a Christian perspective, mm -hmm. social media, like we have to, to be honest with what it is. And even if we like it, even if there are benefits that we enjoy from social media, we got to be willing to say, if this is really bad for, for society, is this, if this is really bad for everyone who engages with it, maybe we need to say, this is bad. Maybe we as Christians need to be willing to say, I'm disengaging from this, mm -hmm. which like, I, I know a lot of people in my congregation who, <laughs> They have made that choice. They said, I'm not, I'm not going to deal with this anymore. And, you know, I'll go for it. I'll, two thumbs up. Um, so it kind of from that perspective, and if I think if social media dies, at least I think as we if currently anything, know it, right. I think if anything, that's good for the church. Because you can't just post, uh, you can't just share your church's thing on Facebook and say, oh, I'm doing, I'm doing mission. Like it forces you to, to have real conversations with people, which, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it also forces Ben to pay for a website host, but you know. Actually, we don't have to, because the district's going to make us one. Oh. Yeah. There you go. That's another uh, thing. For another and, time. And Yeah yeah so if you're a christian jesus still loves you <laughs> don't worry too much about the state of social media if you really like it uh just remember that it is not that it's not an idol and again don't worry too much about it yeah so i, I i'll add to this too I think like for us as Christians, this also helps us in terms of our confession of what community looks like. Um, because I think far too often as Christians, we either say that our, you know, our community is built around um, Sunday mornings, or it's built around the fact that we have so many page views, or it's built around um like the whole concept of online church to me is just bonkers. Um, we could have a whole separate podcast about that. Yeah, one. that's a different story for a different day. If you're listening to this and you mostly just watch my services online or watch your, Josh's services online and you don't have a good reason for not being in that service, go to church. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> anyway. That's a sidebar to where I was going. Um, but social media, like Josh kind of hinted at earlier, like it was set up as this great way for people to connect across society, to connect with people that they didn't often see or had, you know, distance between physically. And it was like a way to keep community. And if it really just continues to tank the way it's tanking, we're going to know that that's not true. The community means doing things to face to face. It means doing life together. It means doing not just the fun stuff together, but also the sucky stuff. It means serving and loving our neighbor. It means speaking words of kindness, being generous and hospitable to people. Um, get a gosh darn meal together every once in a while. A like, gosh darn meal. A gosh, okay. which means it's like, thoroughly fried and probably has <laughs> like some absorbently unhealthy dis uh, dessert at the end. Anyway. Um, so I, for those of you out here, if I, I'm going to do kind of a plug for something that has helped me a lot with this, because, you know, the whole, this is how I keep in touch with friends that I don't live around anymore. This is how I keep community with them. I have a better solution for you. 
I said it already. Call them and text them. And you might say, I don't remember. There is an app. It is called Smart Contact Reminder. Um, and I swear by this thing because I had the same problem. I, I have all these people I want to stay in touch with. I totally forget to do it. So I've put all of them into Smart Contact Reminder. I think it's actually designed for business people, like to make sure you're staying in touch with your contacts. Um, and you and then you sort your contacts into inner circle, middle circle, outer circle, and then extended circle. And then based on what circle they're in, it reminds you to contact them if, and like it sees when you have notifications from them. Um, and then it like it automatically logs, oh, you, you, were, you had a phone call with this person or whatever. And you can decide what counts as contact, right? So for me, it has to be a phone call for anyone in my inner or middle circle, for anyone in the outer or extended circle, a text suffices. Um, and it logs them. And here's, here's the thing for me. If say I have a notification that I need to reach out to Ben, I cannot dismiss it until I log a contact with him which drives me nuts. I hate having notifications just sitting there. So I reach out to people and I got to tell like this, this is even my family. This is the best I've ever been communicating with my family because it reminds me, Hey, you haven't talked to your brother, Ian, you haven't talked to him in five days. You should give him a call. Um, so if you're worried about, Oh no, social media is diminishing. How am I going to stay in touch with people? Download an app like that and and reach out to people that's there's my there's my plug for that that app is not a sponsor of this show uh unless they but, hear about this somehow and want to sponsor us i mean i wouldn't be opposed or if Go somebody it, out there <clears throat> bread and harrell if you're listening uh can you create us a version of that that's like more uh christian community themed you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh yeah but i i I think that's honestly a great tool um or if you use like a google calendar just set yourself periodic reminders um to reach out to people um and i think another piece of of this that can be hard um and may come as a challenge to some of you but uh spend more time with the people one in your family but two in your immediate area that you can see face to face relatively easy spend more time with them than your friends from high school that live halfway across the country all the way across the country sir <laughs> in josh's case all the way across the country because i mean the reality is it's going to be a lot easier for you to care for the people in your immediate context oh yeah and well this is something that i've said about because some people we we pulled back a little bit on our virtual services we just do recordings we don't do live anymore and and some people really like sharing them and they're like i have friends all over the country that are watching and i'm like that's great this is not their church, right? If they go to the mm -hmm. hospital, I can't visit them. Mm -hmm. If your friend is is really sick, you want to be able to go visit them. So if they live far away, I hope you care a ton about them. Because if they're like met friends, like I think Ben's right. Dedicate your time to, to, to closer people, which maybe sounds a little callous, but I mean, here's, I think, another piece of that reality. You need to have people that live close to you that you can count on in a crisis. Because, you know, I, I'll take the example here of um, if my wife or I ended up in the hospital, I'd want to know who, who here in the state of Michigan I could reach out to and say, I need help right now. And I know that they would drop everything and help me and they would be here within an hour. And I have a couple of friends here that I I know I could do that. 
Like I know I could say, Hey, I need help. And they'd be here within the hour. Um, my parents would do that if they lived in the state of Michigan, but they are a good 10 and a half hour car ride from here or a very expensive plane flight. Uh, and Detroit to Minneapolis is not the most popular route in the world, so they don't fly it direct very often. So, like, I think the fastest they could get here, five, six hours. Um, and that's, like, two states. I imagine for Josh, like, for you, it's probably... 12 hours would be the fastest for, you could oh, get. Oh, for my out. family? Oh. Yeah. And that might be pushing it. So, like, if you, yeah. need, if you need someone <laughs> by your side, it's got to be someone local. Right? Yeah. And I think social media, to some extent, has given us the illusion that we can have, like, people there to care for us that don't that really aren't there uh and sometimes you really need that human human touch yeah. that only can come from someone who's there physically um that sounds a little suggestive so don't take yep. it that way nope nope uh so on that uh uplifting note uh takeaway what, what's your one takeaway ben um Social media stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful when you use it. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. Uh, I My takeaway is don't get too upset that Twitter is Elon's punchline. He's sarcastically selling insults for eight bucks. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of enjoy watching the world burn. So this has been kind of fun. Um, yeah. So uh, prayer, <laughs> prayer thoughts for today. Uh, pray, pray that people who do have real needs that are getting met by social media, whether in a, in a good way or not, pray that someone in their life can take care of them. Mm -hmm. and and maybe move them away from that that reliance um mm -hmm. <laughs> pray for the world because <laughs> there there are a lot of far-reaching consequences um i think in a lot of ways social media has been a pandora's box uh and we opened it without having any any idea what it, it was going to have the sign pandora's box on the side how was I supposed to know? Come on. Uh, so just pray for the world as we navigate this and the fallout from social media. And uh, pray for us that no one gets really upset about this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone um, will be too upset. I hope but, not. Yeah. I mean, pray for your pastors. We appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> shameless plugs. The first one is just uh, for this episode. If you have anyone who is really worried about social media or they, you know, it's it's some it's a subject of interest to them. I uh, send this send a link to this episode to them. Um, hopefully it's it's a value and, and it can help them or it can edify them in some way um also now the subscribe. ironic plug now the ironic plug do it do it we have a facebook page <laughs> hey. uh, we it's less ironic because we really don't use we use I, it I like think, a website we use it like a free website <laughs> if that we we use it as a mailbox man so we we post exactly once That's a week true. just to say like hey there's a new episode out and but mostly it's there if you don't have a personal connection to either of us but you somehow stumbled across this podcast you can use that to me like message the page and we'll get the message and you could do that 
Um, if if you want an old episode remastered, <laughs> go for it. Uh, if you want us to tackle a certain topic or you want us to try and get a certain guest on or you want to be a guest, all of those are welcome. You can reach out through that page or reach out to one of us personally. And finally, we're on all the major podcasting platforms at this point. We're on Spotify, iTunes, Pandora, iHeartRadio, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. So whatever you listen to podcasts on, uh, please subscribe because it <laughs> – validates the time we put into this because we can yeah. look and say hey people listen to these shows people are interested and um and are engaging in this way so those are our shameless plugs uh that's all i got brothers and sisters go in peace serve the lord thanks be to god <laughs>